Hi everybody, my name is James Floyd Kelly. I'm a writer in Atlanta, Georgia, and I want to welcome you to a new uh, video blog, vlog. What are we calling it, Eric? Are we going to call it a podcast? Like, hangout? Uh, I don't know. A podcast? Vlog? Whatever. <laughs> vlog is such a weird word. I don't know. It, it feels <laughs> barbarian to me. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let's just run with it. But, <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, the funny thing, Eric, is I'm a nonfiction writer, for those of you yep. who don't know me, and you probably don't know me unless you're really into technology books. But I'm a nonfiction writer, and uh, Eric is a good friend of mine. We've never met, actually, in person, but we've had lots of online conversations. We met yes, via geekdad.com was kind of how we, we met up. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric is a fiction writer, and so I approached Eric and said, hey, Eric, I really, really, really want to start writing fiction, but I don't like to reinvent the wheel. So I want to chat with you. Uh, and I want to have some various discussions with you and figure out how you got where you were to where you are now and where you want to be. He said, great idea, and that's what you're going to be uh, listening in on right now. We're going to have some great talks. I think, Eric, we, de we decided that we want to make this an ongoing thing, right? Yeah, I would like to do that. I think that uh, 15 minutes is about a perfect size for uh, what I want to watch on the Internet. I don't want to watch an hour-long podcast. I, d I don't listen to hour-long podcasts. I tend to listen or watch the 15-minute versions. So that's well, where we're headed. Well, according to my timer, we've got 13 minutes left, so we better, we better get to it. Excellent. <laughs> well, listen, Eric, I wanted to start out. I, I know your story, but people watching this are not going to know your story. So the first question, obviously, is, Eric, who are you, and why should people care what you have to say about writing fiction? So I am the author of uh, Etna Adrift, and uh, the forthcoming sequel, The Far Bank of the Rubicon. I'm the inventor of the Pax Imperium universe, which is a space opera science fiction universe with emphasis on characters and uh, re real... I, I like my, uh, my characters to have real reactions and to resemble what I think, the way I think I would react and the people around me would react in the situations that they face. So that's kind of my niche where I'm writing my fiction right now. And, and I have read Etna Uprising, and I have to say, I wrote Etna a book. Drift. Etna uh, Drift. Etna Drift. Excuse me. It used to be called, you know, you. you yeah, had a I know. I, I have. Yeah, we'll get into that <laughs> mess. And you know, that's a that's going to be a great point to talk about later on because yep. there's nothing wrong with changing the title of a novel. I mean, you yep. own you own your stories, not some publisher, so you can do that. Yep. Um, I have read them, uh, and I'm looking forward to Rubicon. Highly looking forward to it because um, I. I'm not saying this because I'm your friend, and I told you this. I would yes, tell you, you did. I would tell you if I hated it. <laughs> I loved it. It was a good story, and I even wrote, I think, in my Geek Dad review that I really feel that you are writing at the same professional level as the books I go to the bookstore and, and, and purchase and read. Thank you. I have a lot of fun doing it. I feel, you know, for me, finding fiction writing feels like coming home. It feels like, uh, it, you know, in a similar way, when I started writing for Geek Dad, it was finally... Um, owned my geekiness after running for it from it for many, many years, and you start owning it, and you're like, yeah, that's who I am, and I started writing science fiction, and I, I just feel like I'm doing what I, what I was created to do, what I was designed to do, so, yeah, it's we a good know, thing. I know a lot of people watching this right now want to be in your shoes. They want to write... <laughs> What, you know, they don't know my shoes if they want to be in my shoes. They, they, they want to write probably fiction. That's what, yeah. that's what we're talking about here. Now, you, you, you're specifically writing science fiction, but I think a lot of what we're going to discuss applies to romance, applies to historical fiction, what, what have you. Because you basically, from my point of view, I'm a nonfiction writer. I write technology books. I know how to structure the type of books I do. I don't know much about fiction writing. So what I'm going to learn from you, hopefully, in these in these discussions, I'm hoping that there are people out there that are also going to uh, to learn, and I want them sending in questions to you so that we can we can you know share those questions and talk about them. Yeah, that would be awesome. So for now, um, wherever you see this posted, send in questions, and uh, so that'll be YouTube, my blog, and Geek Dad. We'll 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 be looking for questions there, and uh, and look to actually answer those in in future shows. And, and I'd like viewers to be aware that Eric is working from his basement, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, I am. <laughs> so there is no shame in working from your basement, folks. Uh, um, uh, and, and I have no pants on, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, don't move the camera. We, <laughs> yeah, that. we won't um, be moving the camera. No, no. Well, you know, let me ask you this. Um, you have a very interesting story in terms of, um, you know, what most of us consider, you know, you go to college or, or you find a career, you fall into it. And, you know, the people, we always consider people who are so lucky to be fiction writers, they just sort of started as fiction writers. We always hear the stories about how high schoolers right. and college grads dropped out. And, right. and uh, you have an interesting story about how you really got into fiction writing. You know, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've actually heard that most fiction writers or many fiction writers don't write uh, until their late 30s. And I think there's um, a lot of truth in that. Fiction writing, as, as we all know, is um, what I call a lottery career. It is not a career where you're going to make a lot of money. And so, to be honest, I don't think I would have ended up where I am if I had had another choice. And so my story is that, you know, in... Uh, the fall of 2011, I got laid off from a job as a debt management counselor after having, well, I should start. In 2008, I was a realtor and had been a realtor for five years, really loved it, uh, but five years wasn't long enough to actually survive the crash of, of the housing market. So as I saw that crash, I looked for a different career and ended up thinking that being a financial advisor was really a similar type thing. I was helping people with their money. I was helping people make good financial decisions and didn't see the stock market crash, which didn't start until a, literally about the day I started my job. was Mar I was March 17th. It was, it was St. Patrick's Day of 2008 is when I started as a stockbroker and just watched the market tank after that. So I rode that whole thing out, went through two corporate mergers and washed out of there in 2010 and then went – and uh, tried to open my own business at that point. It didn't work, and then, so I ended up doing debt management counseling for a year to pay bills. And when I got laid off there because because uh, the office shut down, um, that I, I was looking at three different careers in three years uh, without any longevity and really recognizing that the unemployment rate was such that I, I was going to have a hard time getting hiring managers to look at me. So I needed to do something quick to make money. And that was right as the Kindle self-publishing model was beginning to take off. And you were just hearing a little bit noise about how you could self-publish and actually make an income. And so I started researching it and read up, read up on it and decided to try it. Do you think the universe was sending you a message that you... you I do think the universe was sending me a message, and I, and I really do. And, and it, was, it was at the same point in time where I started writing for Geek Dad, right? Right, that December. I, I also put, put up... The, the first thing I wrote for them was the book review of the Settlers of Catan novel, which, if you haven't read it, is a great novel. I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but over in Germany where board games are okay and they're cool... Um, Klaus Schreiber was able to get one of the best German historical fiction writers to write his novel for him related to that book, and it's a fantastic book. So read read The Settlers of Catan. It's a good book. Put a link to it. Put a link to it. Yeah, we will throw a link to it. Uh, but So I, I the very first thing I published was nonfiction. I put together a 50,000-word book on personal finance, which is what I had my experience in, um, called How to Manage Your Money When You Don't Have Any, which was something I was intimately familiar with at that point. And um, felt like the marketplace really needed in that when you looked at the personal finance literature, it was aimed at the, mil the middle class and the wealthy. And so finding, especially it, at that point in time, our nation really needed a book that was, that was aimed at people who were no longer middle class, who had slipped out of the middle class and were struggling to find the employment that they need. And that yeah. book, to this day, continues to sell really, really well. In fact... This year it's picked up. I just sold this month. I sold 430 copies of that wow. book, which wow. is great. Copy. That is a for a monthly sale for a nonfiction. I I can attest that's a good number. No, it let was me a ask, very good number. That was nonfiction, but had you already had in your mind that you wanted to jump yeah. to fiction? Oh, so you knew it was coming. Yeah, I did, and uh, you know at that point the 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 nonfiction book hit really easily. It 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 started selling. It started taking off. And I thought, oh, this is easy. Let's just let's just write stuff and put it out there in in the Kindle market, and um, it'll take off all on its own. And wow. I just found out really fast that's not the case in fiction. That that there is, you know, if you're gonna try, if you're gonna if you're worrying purely about making money, right? If that's where your goals are, write nonfiction and self-publish it. You can do a lot better. If if you want to work hard 
to and and rise up, you know, as as the cream of the crop, then that's what that's going to have to be your vision for being a fiction writer because there are so many people self-publishing on the Kindle side and the, you know publishing fiction books on their own, and the quality uh, is varies a lot. Uh, and and uh, there's still a lot of stigma. You know, my my personal finance book faces very very little stigma. Um, there are very few people who will look at that book and say it's self-published and they won't buy it uh, on the nonfiction side. There are still a lot of buyers who are wary of of uh, self-published fiction. Well, let's 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 change tact uh, real here. Um, you know, this is going to be a 15 minute, uh, you know, give or take a few minutes. We want to make this into uh, an ongoing series, so we're 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 getting close to our time limit. So let's turn this into a teaser. Let's make this All a right. teaser. Okay? We'll what turn we're it gonna, into a teaser. Let's let's tell the viewers, stay tuned because here are some of the things we want to talk about, Eric. You and I, yep. we've talked about this. We've we've kind of brainstormed this, and and we we know we want to talk about the Amazon publishing model. We want to talk about the traditional model. You have a um. You created a, a, I call it an infographic. I'm not sure if that's the right term for it, but a, you know, you created this graphic that, that breaks down the the traditional and versus the non-traditional. And I know we want to talk about that. So what I think would be a good idea is for you to post that so viewers can go check it out. I will post it. And maybe so we can that, talk about it next. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. We'll we can do that. We will definitely have that posted on Geek Dad. Uh, it is posted on my website at ericwex.com, so you can look at it there. Uh, but between those two places, and I'll put a link up on the YouTube channel with this video so that people can actually look look for that, and okay. then uh, we'll put out another video where we actually spend our time talking about that. Yeah, now, you know, some of the things, now, you may have some ideas there, but I know from, from a nonfiction writer, or let's just say I've never written anything, because I it, when it terms, comes to fiction, I have... I have dabbled in fiction, but I am not a published fiction writer. So I know from, from my questions to you uh, that, that I know we want to discuss or I want to discuss with you relate to your writing process. Um, okay. I want to, you know, I hope we can talk about that. I want to talk about this Amazon process. You know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, yeah, I can, I know Word, I can write something, but we, we definitely need to talk about the whole moving over to the Amazon and, yep. you know, and, and what's involved there, and then of course a big one is marketing. I mean, you know, you've you've talked to me about that. That the uh, the, tr the the tr the non traditional publishing methods are requiring a lot more work yep. on your end. So we've got we have got probably months worth of fifteen minute long uh, you know discussions here. I think we can make it work. I do. I'm. I'm. And you know. And I. You know. You know. I've always loved talking to you on on uh, Google Hangout or Skype or whatever. And these yep. are great. But again, I want to reiterate to the viewers that hey, if you've got questions, send them in to Eric, um, and we will we'll try our best to fit them in where they where they fit best. Yep. And we we're not going to bore you. We definitely want to make sure these things are short and sweet, and they get to the point. This first one may be a little la 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 everywhere, but we just wanted you, the readers, the viewers, to know who you are. Yep. And we'll, yeah. and we'll fill it with content by posting that uh, that infographic so people can actually look that over, and then we'll go from there. Right, and any links or book like the the, the uh, Catan book, anything that we mention in the in the video, uh, we'll make sure that there are links to those kind of things so that you can yep. go straight through them, whatever. But listen, Eric, this has been fun. We're we're actually two minutes over, so I don't think that's too bad. Uh, hey, not that's pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think both of us can be long-winded if you give us a topic that we're, we, we really enjoy. Absolutely. But, uh, I wanted to tell you, you know, I appreciate you volunteering to do this because, um, you know, no offense, you're not that million-dollar uh, writer yet. No, no, I'm not. Where I call up Mr. Eric and say, hey, let's do it, and you're, no, 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 no. I don't have time for that. I hope right. that never happens. Um, I, I hope not, too. I hope you're right there with me. You know what? I'm I'm looking forward to learning a lot from you and uh, and picking your brain. I mean, I'm going to pick it, Eric. Trust me, I am going to pick you to the bone. It's going to be the, <laughs> this. It's going to be the old fish cartoon where the cat you know, pulls it out. And that kind of stuff. We're going to pick your brain. The viewers are going to help me pick your brain, and we're going to turn this into a great little uh, podcast slash vcast slash video log blog. We'll come up with a good name for it and a title. And uh, hopefully, viewers, you'll keep joining in with us and uh, listen to more of Eric's uh, discussion. Eric, uh, before we leave, is there anything you want to tell tell your viewers uh, about maybe maybe your Kickstarter? Tell, tell real quick about how your Kickstarter's come along. My Kickstarter actually finished, and I funded uh, then the on the far bank of the Rubicon book at 400 percent. 
so I did really, really well on Kickstarter, and I'm very excited. So you should be seeing a novel coming out sometime end of July, early August. Um, my Kickstarter backers are going to get it in July, and then I'll give them a couple of weeks to read it, and then we'll get it out to everybody else. So Very good. And readers, uh, viewers, I keep saying readers, but, you know, they are readers. Uh, sure. They're, they're viewers slash readers. If you have not read any of Eric's work, let me tell you, you need to go hunt it down. If you're if you're really into fiction, like he said, his stories are character driven. I love scoundrel stories, and I'm telling you, Edna <laughs> was a pure scoundrel story. Jack's you like, a scoundrel. <laughs> you like Han Solo? You're gonna love this book. Um, you're not supposed to like him. Okay? You're not. I just I just need to say that because I think sometimes people feel embarrassed about not liking the hero. You, I'm not asking you to like him. <laughs> He's no, not likable. When I close a scoundrel book, I mean, my, my wife will tell you I'm the guy that goes. I root for the – I sometimes root for the bad guy. I, yeah, you know it. I think that's just the rebellious part of me. But, Jack, man, I'm telling you, Etna was great. Go get it. Read it. And uh, and you'll get a taste of what Eric's uh, Eric's skill level is when it comes to writing. Eric, thanks for, uh, thanks for the video chat. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off in just a minute. And – we will um, we'll do this again in a week, right? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Video uh, viewers, thanks for joining in. See ya.